Hi and hello gorgeous peeps and welcome to my first ever and admittedly probably last ever speedy unboxing. My challenge is to do a full guided tour of the fresh budget friendly Nokia G21, a £150 stock Android blower, including a squint at the design, the software, the media chops, the gaming abilities and even a camera test all in just one short hour. Why am I actually doing this to myself? Well there's been a absolute shag ton of smartphones launching recently you may have noticed if you're a bit of a tech fan and frankly one hour is all I've got to shoot this bad boy if we want to get it edited and uploaded before silly o'clock in the morning. But hey if this new format isn't an absolute cluster f then maybe I'll make it a more regular thing or maybe I'll just do drunken unboxings instead because frankly that sounds a lot more fun. But anyway that's already a full minute spunked up the wall so let's crack on. Now the Nokia G21 can be snaffled right now direct from Nokia for $149.99 although stock availability does seem to be a little bit all over the place. Now that sort of price point is a strong rival to the likes of the Poco M4s, the freshly launched Mortal G22. What do you actually get in the box besides the smartphone? Well you get your Porky pin device to actually get your SIM in the tree, get the usual product and safety information guff, you've got your 3 pin adapter with a pop-up action which I always love to see and you've also got yourself a Type-C USB cable and that's it no prophylactic case or anything like that. Right that's box done so let's check out the actual phone. So no real surprises as far as the Nokia G21 design goes it is your standard Nokia budget blower. Quite a girthy member as always and you've got your basic budget friendly polycarbonate back end so basically just a plastic Arse, and it's available in two different colours, this here Nordic Blue, otherwise also Dusk, which is basically just kind of black-ish. Oh, just a few notifications popping through because I've just set it up. You've got a textured surface here on the back end of the Nokia G21 as well, so that should hopefully add a good bit of grip and also means that uh, the back end of the phone doesn't pick up greasy prints too easily. Camera chassis only just an ever so slightly from the arse end as well. And yeah, this is definitely a bit of a hand filler as well. It's only a 6.5 inch display, so not massive compared with a lot of 2022 smartphones, but of course, as you can see, they're fairly thick bezels surrounding that display as well especially that big old fat lip down below and to keep everything running smoothly it's a bit of android one action on here not full fat android and it's not the latest freshest android unfortunately it is still android version 11. this phone will get an update to android 12 and also android 13 beyond it because nokia or slash hmd global has promised two years of os updates but i would expect that would be it and hmd has also promised three years of security updates although again not sure how frequently those updates will be rolling in especially after a couple of years. But if you want a lovely stock bit of Android action, well Nokia is one of the few brands you can actually turn to for that. No launchers thrust there on top of it. HMD has done very little tinkering at all. They haven't chucked a lot of crap on there so you won't find TikTok or LinkedIn. Or oh you will find LinkedIn. Uh. Curse you! Okay so they've started putting LinkedIn on their phones uh, but hopefully you can just uninstall this yes thank god but yes unfortunately like a lot of other budget Nokia's and Motorola's and other affordable phones in general you do get a dedicated Google Assistant key here on the edge if you find you occasionally accidentally knock this button when you're pulling your phone out of your pocket your bag or whatever the good news is you can at least disable it here on the G23 yeah not so clever now are you and there are plenty of other ways of calling up that Google Assistant as well including just like tapping this little toolbar down here you can still swipe up from either of the bottom corners lots of stuff so absolutely no idea why this is still a thing but there you go now let's chat security and this Nokia blower has an edge mounted fingerprint sensor just built into that power button right there and so far seems pretty dependable nice and responsive and one of the few features that HMD Global has added on top of that stock Android experience is a bit of face recognition which we just don't get built in there by default and again this seems to do the job quite nicely even in slightly trickier light and storage who doesn't like talking about a good bit of storage and uh, you've got 64 gigs of space by default here on the Nokia G21 although you can upgrade that to 128 gigs if you want. Fun fact 64 gigs is what you'll get on the considerably more expensive iPhone SE3 and that's not even expandable whereas the good old Nokia G21 does allow micro SD memory cards to be inserted inside of it up to 512 gigs in a separate slot as well no less. So now let's turn our attention to that 6.5 inch IPS display. Now like a lot of other budget blows this is a fairly simple panel. Not terrible by any means but not particularly great. As you can see there quite narrow viewing angles is one of the first flaws you immediately notice on this thing. Those colours and the overall image just darkening as soon as you tilt it away from your face. Not ideal if you're going to be watching a bit of Netflix with 
a couple of buddies on the train or whatever. And it is also a basic HD plus 1680 by 720 pixel resolution. So certainly tiny text and everything, not quite as sharp as you would like. And uh, you know, when you are kicking back with some Netflix, Disney plus, YouTube or whatever, the visuals aren't as sharp as what you would find on a full HD plus rival. And when you're enjoying some more vibrant visual fare, like uh, this particular scene in West Side Story, for instance, which I haven't watched, but I have uh, enjoyed this scene many times because it's great for showing off smartphone screens. Those colors, as you can see there, aren't exactly popping either uh, quite sort of watered down, lackluster affair. But you know what? If you're not really a, a visual snob, you literally just want to watch some YouTube videos on the go, you maybe just watch my bold bonds chatting at you about tech or whatever, it'll do the job, it's absolutely fine. And I do love how you've got a nipple notch on this thing as well. What a blast from the past. I haven't seen one of those for a while. Thankfully, it's a fairly subtle wee effort. It doesn't jut massively into your view when you do decide to go full screen. The things I like about this display are the fact that it's reasonably bright when you bump it all the way to the maximum levels, which is what it's on right now. So even on a fairly sunny day, you should hopefully not have to squint too hard to see what's up. And if you dive on into the display settings, you've got the usual night light, for instance, which just helps to filter blue light and make for an easy on the eye experience uh, late in the evenings. You've also got an adaptive screen refresh rate as well. So as you can see there, this can boost the refresh rate up to 90 hertz when you are enjoying supported content. As for the speakers, well, it's just your bog standard basic mono speaker output here on the Nokia G21. So let's see if it's actually all right. It's imperative that I fill up my Google Drive storage with endless identical photos of my cats, of course, for some reason. And yeah, it's not particularly loud and is quite tinny, as you'd expect, of course, easily muffled as well, uh, given it's just a mono speaker output. But, you know, in a pinch, it'll be fine if you're a bit of YouTuber or whatever. Again, the good news is you don't actually have a headphone jack up at the top end if you want to get plugged in and you've got Bluetooth 5 support as well. So as you would expect, or if you don't expect it, then you really bloody should expect it. Proper basic performance here on the Nokia G21 as it is powered by the Unisoc T606 SoC. And that is backed by just four gigs of RAM. So you're pretty uh, simple benchmarking scores are right there. The everyday experience seems okay-ish, although definitely a bit judgery here and there. You might have to occasionally be patient as uh, you're waiting for your stuff to load up or what have you. And I'm certainly expecting the camera performance uh, to be a little bit judgery at best, because that tends to be the area that really suffers when you get a simple SOC like this one. But what I'm really curious about is, can this Nokia blower actually handle a bit of gaming? Well, I've got just about enough time for a super quick blast on Call of Duty Mobile, so let's see how it handles this. First thing is, it's uh, it's fairly tricky to see them when they're right in the distance because it's not the sharpest of displays. But I've managed to actually kill a couple of people so far, so that's a bonus. Coming into my backyard. Oh, bugger. Oh, there's somebody. Oh, and I'm already dead. Oh, screen responsiveness could definitely be a little bit better as well. Oh, Christ. Oh, it's so unresponsive. Oh, I managed to get him. Just. So long story short, it actually ran all right on the medium detail settings, but the touch responsiveness is not fantastic. So if you're playing against anyone who's even vaguely competent, you don't really stand much of a chance. At least that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. So battery life and what you've got packed inside of that girthy frame is a 5,000 milliamp battery. So pretty damn sizable, although still fairly standard for this sort of budget price point. And frankly, I'd be shocked if you didn't get a couple of full days of use out of a single charge of this thing uh, with your typical usage, of course. You've got the stock Android experience. You've got the energy efficient Unisoc chipset. So yeah, this thing is going to power through. But while you have support for 18 watt charging here on the Nokia G21, unfortunately the cheeky sods have only bundled you a 10 watt adapter in the box. If you want to take full advantage of that slightly faster charging support, you'll have to provide your own. But hey, at least it's type C down below rather than micro USB, spit spit. So now I have literal minutes to talk about the camera tech and what you get slapped on the arse end of the Nokia G21 is a 50 megapixel primary sensor. Sounds pretty decent as far as the specs go with that 4-in-1 pixel bin. There's no ultra wide angle shooter or anything here though the other two lenses are your basic bog standard 2 megapixel depth sensor and macro lens whoop de doo UI is pretty simple and straightforward. You do actually have some AI suggestions. So for instance, if a face is detected, it'll say, hey, try portrait mode out. You've got your 
Portrait mode smarts on there, complete with various bokeh effects you can tinker around with. And a few other bonus camera modes as well, including, of course, the obligatory night mode. You've got that macro mode to use the macro lens. No dedicated pro mode, though, if you wanted to tinker around with the settings manually. So just relying on that auto mode to do everything for you. And while I'm uploading this footage to my laptop and also sort of mid-editing, if I've got time, I'll run around and take some sample photos with the Nokia G21. So that's what you're looking at right now. Pretty basic performance, I would imagine, especially indoors in more ambient light. And if you want to shoot some home movies with your G21, well, the footage resolution tops off at Full HD 1080p. And again, I'll try and capture some quick sample footage with the Nokia G21. It's almost certainly just going to be my cats looking at me like I'm an absolute mentalist. And then last up around front, it's your basic bog standard 8 megapixel selfie shooter. So again, don't expect to get, you know, super crisp detail in, uh, in, in any of those selfies, which suits me absolutely fine because, oh my God, look at those bags under those eyes. Not good, dude. Most certainly not a keeper. And with that front face and 8 meg selfie camera, you can shoot full HD video footage again if you like. And I've literally got seconds left, so I'll just leave it at that. So that, in a nutshell, is the... I haven't angled that camera right at all. There we go. Uh, the Nokia G21. And if you are on a really tight budget, you don't mind limited performance. You're certainly not going to be doing any gaming on your smartphone. You don't mind the low-res screen or anything either. Well, it offers a big battery, no doubt long battery life on this thing. A lovely stock Android experience, eventually Android 12, and then eventually, eventually Android 13. Of course, strong competition from the likes of the Moto G22, those Poco M series smartphones, quite a lot of other budget blows as well. I've rounded up the best budget blows for under £200 right now, so definitely go check that bad boy out for more on the biggest competition. It'd definitely be great to hear your thoughts on the Nokia G21 down in the comments below. Please do have yourselves a wonderful rest of the week. Pog subscribe, ding that notifications bell, anything else I've forgotten. Ah, cheers everyone, love you. Thank you.